As a kid growing up in the 50s and 60s, my ultimate journeys were made with Dan Dare in the Eagle comic. Later, it was watching the breathtaking Apollo missions that landed men on the moon. I expected that this would continue to other planets and I expect others did too. But still, there are only 12 sets of footprints on the moon's surface. We spend vast amounts of money and time searching for signs of extraterrestrial life in the SETI program and little on the exploration of the journey of life all of us are on. Our ultimate journey begins with our birth and ends inevitably in our death. We've all heard the famous Benjamin Franklin quote, in this world nothing can be said to be certain except death and taxes. <laughs> there was a funeral director who used to sign his letters Yours, eventually. On a gravestone I saw was written the very true words. Now I know something you don't. Our life's journey will end one day and we too will know things we don't know now. Blaise Pascal used to speak about his wager. He said, if I believe in God and find out that he doesn't exist, I've lost little. If you bet that there is no God and he does exist, you've lost everything. Only after our greatest adventure in life, our death, will we know for sure and then it will be too late to change our mind. The fear of death is a relatively complicated phobia. Many people are afraid of dying. Some, quite naturally, fear the process of dying. And others just fear the uncertainty of being dead. Even just thinking about death affects us profoundly in many different ways. Australian Arthur Stace was a reformed alcoholic who became a Christian and spread his message by writing the word eternity in beautiful copper plate writing with chalk on footpaths in and around Sydney. He did this for about 35 years. You may remember the picture of the Sydney Harbour Bridge at the turn of the millennium a replica of his way of writing the word eternity was illuminated at the very centre of the bridge. Another Australian, Frank Jenner, used to approach people on George Street in Sydney and say, excuse me, could I ask you a question? I hope it won't offend you. If you died within 24 hours, where would you be in eternity? Heaven or hell? How would you react to that? What a weirdo! Or perhaps, instead of reacting, you would respond by at least thinking about eternity. After all, eternity is everlasting. Most cultures believe in some sort of life after death. Some think that the soul exists in another world, like Christianity, Islam, and many pagan beliefs. Others place their faith in reincarnation, as in many of the forms of Hinduism and Buddhism, where the person starts a new life in a different physical form or body after death. Ancient Egyptians would mummify their bodies and put them in elaborate stone coffins filled with everything they need for the afterlife, 
such as vehicles, tools, food, wine and household items. The Book of the Dead is a collection of spells which the Egyptians had to enable the soul of the deceased to navigate the afterlife. They were made for each person who could afford it and placed in their coffin as a kind of manual to help them on their journey after death. At a funeral recently, I heard someone saying, I bet he's looking down on us right now and laughing. What surprised me was that the person being cremated at that time was a lifelong atheist. Curiously, most people believe similar ideas about life after death, even atheists. So it must be deeper than religion or fear of not existing. Ecclesiastes chapter 3 is frequently read at funerals, the piece that starts, for everything there is a season and a time for every matter under heaven, a time to be born and a time to die, etc. Usually we stop at a time for war and a time for peace. But the key to the chapter is verse 11. God has made everything beautiful in its time. Also, he has put eternity into man's heart. God created a beautiful universe and we've screwed it up. We suppress the truth of God's word, even though each of us know deep down that eternity exists, but we never take the time to think about it. The great preacher C.H. Spurgeon said, great numbers of people have no concern about eternal things. They care more about their cats and dogs than about their souls. During the coronavirus lockdown, we have the time to consider where we are on the ultimate journey. Eternity is the terminus of our journey, so we should give careful attention to what lies ahead for us, as it's forever. Jesus drew back the curtain of death when he recounted the story of the rich man and the poor man, Lazarus. Not the Lazarus that Jesus raised from the dead. This was a beggar. This man was the only character in any of Jesus' parables to be given a name. This has caused some to believe that this was a, the record of two deaths that people would have actually known about from recent history. Jesus is revealing the dramatic change in the circumstances of both men now they were in eternity. The rich man had had no interest in preaching while he was alive, but now in eternity, knowing he was lost, he begs that Lazarus be sent back to warn his five brothers. He stated, if someone goes to them from the dead, they will repent. He believed his brothers would do what he had never done in his life. Jesus of Nazareth was crucified, raised from the dead, and even with that knowledge, only relatively few believed on him in Jerusalem. And it has been forever thus. My Uncle Frank was sitting right behind me at my father's funeral. And the saddest part of the service for me was to hear my favourite uncle groan and say out loud, Oh no, not again. That was when we began to sing Psalm 23, my father's favourite. As you remember, that says, 
Even though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, I will fear no evil, for you are with me. Your rod and your staff, they comfort me. A few years later, I attended Uncle Frank's funeral. And as far as I know, he never changed his mind. The horrifying truth about eternity is that it's a, a form of lockdown from which there is no release. We decide in this life and the consequences are eternal. Jesus said that before he returned to earth, there would be signs of the times to look out for. He said, for nation will rise against nation and kingdom against kingdom. There will be earthquakes in various places. There will be famines. These are but the beginning of the birth pains. Right now, we could add to that list COVID-19, the locust plague ravaging Africa, record-breaking fires in Australia, the financial crisis, the increase in earthquake activity, and many other markers pointing towards the time of Christ's return. When we realise that Satan, who ruined this world with his lies, is doing everything to oppose God right now, we begin to get an eternal perspective. This world is temporary. There is going to be a new heaven and a new earth. Jesus said, Do not fear those who kill the body, but cannot kill the soul. Rather, Fear him who can destroy both soul and body in hell. Alarm bells are ringing in our world today. We can wake up and plan for eternity or ignore the warnings and continue in a state of reduced consciousness and ultimately find ourselves lost forever. Jesus warned, when all these things begin to happen, stand straight and look up, for your salvation is near. It's time we looked up into the face of our Creator, who entered our world as a child, grew up to be the greatest man who ever lived and gave his life so that we might live. However, we must do what the rich man refuse to do. We must repent of our sins and surrender our lives to our Creator who said, I give them eternal life and they will never perish and no one will snatch them out of my hand. We're all travelling on our ultimate journey with eternity as the terminus and it's a one-way ticket isn't it time you considered your destination? Are you looking for safety, certainty and enjoyment? You will find all these and much more in Christ. So, if you were to die in the next 24 hours, where would you be? <laughs>